everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener, beauty, skincare, and beyond. I try products out for you so you have a better idea of what to buy and more importantly, what not to buy. And today, I am talking about the Lily Lolo BB Cream. My first review of this was back in 2018, so I felt like it was time for an update. Let's get into the review. Links to everything that I talk about will be below. I have the Lily Lolo BB Cream in light. It's $22, which is a really respectable price point in the clean beauty space. A lot of the other ones that I like that are featured in Brit's Picks, which is basically a page featuring all of my favorites all in one spot, they're a little bit higher price point, so I was happy to see the $22 price point here. I'm going to run through my scorecard. It's five quick questions. Gets me to one final verdict when I buy it again. I did review it in 2018, and I didn't say I would buy it again, but I was also harping quite quite a bit and using words like toxic chemicals and EWG and things have changed so much. Like my opinion on everything has shifted significantly since then. I purchased this product, you're getting my honest opinion as always over here. If you like that kind of a thing, please take two seconds, hit the like button, share it with a friend. Let's dive into the first question, which is all about ingredients. How do they look? Well, I'll tell you first and foremost, I do not rely on the EWG anymore. It is not gospel. It is not like all end all be all for me. I haven't had to lean as heavily on the EWG and they never respond to me. So I'm not really a huge fan of that. I like the Think Dirty app these days if I need it, but usually I don't. Anyway, I looked through the ingredients. I am not a cosmetic chemist. Read the disclaimer on the screen. Please do your own research. What works for me might not work for you and vice versa. But I didn't see many red flags. I saw coconut oil derivatives in here. I saw parfum mentioned, but they fully disclosed what's inside, which are essential oils. Those two types of ingredients could be not well tolerated by your skin. So if that's a pass for you, then this is a pass for you. But for everybody else, I saw jojoba oil, argan oil. There's hyaluronic acid at the end. Sleeping Bunny certified, vegan, talc free, GMO free. All of the rest of the information, if you want to dive deep into ingredients, is going to be back on the scorecard post on my website. So you can click the link below if you want to learn more. Now let's move into application. Overall for application, the fingers worked the best for me. This is a very lightweight, creamy, almost silky, but not that silicone-esque silkiness but it's just a beautiful formula. It feels lovely and it feels lovely going on. I saw a little bit of streaking, but really pressing that in with the fingers evened things out very quickly for me. I try it with a kabuki brush. I try it with a sponge. For me, I really love, I like the kabuki. I actually really like the kabuki, but for this, fingers just worked better than anything else. No brushes needed for me, which I love. Easy peasy. It received a four out of five on the scorecard. Time to talk about coverage. This is supposed to provide, BB stands for Beauty Balm. It's usually a lighter coverage. The coverage here was really lovely. It wasn't sheer. So you're getting some type of evening out if you're looking for that, which I always am. I like that. I don't need it to be opaque, but I love a BB cream for that reason. It's a nice light evening out. Sometimes you just can't even see anything, so this is not that situation. The mineral pigments inside of this formula, I believe, do add a little bit of luminosity, which the brand talks about on their product page. That provides a light reflection that also helps even things out without looking like heavy makeup. It's a very skin looks like skin coverage situation. One thing I want to talk about here is also the shade range. I dinged this back in 2018. I'm dinging it now. It's very small. There are only five shades available and they skew very light. So that's going to be an automatic no for a huge amount of the population. I wish, wish, wish they would expand their shade range. It's a miss. But overall for coverage, I gave it a three out of five on the scorecard. I think I would have given it a four, but the shade range was just so sad. Two more quickies. Finish and wear test. So the finish overall for me during the first few minutes was not so great. It was a little bit of streakiness, a little bit of sitting on top. And that was even trying other different modes of application and tools. It just wasn't melting into my skin. Cut to 15, 20 minutes later, the oils of the skin kind of release. It starts meshing. It was perfectly fine. So I had to wait a little bit to get there but it's really not an end of the world situation. It's not a non-negotiable for me. And the finish that I achieved by waiting was lovely. I have combination skin. I did not need to set this at all. If you have oily skin, you might want to, but 
The finish is also not dewy. This is a lovely option if you're looking for a more everyday natural finish. Four out of five on the scorecard. Finally, we're gonna talk about wear test. Does it last? One of the claims is that it holds on all day, and it did. It did a very good job for the wear test for me. It felt lightweight. I didn't know it was there. It wasn't too shiny. Plus, I didn't need to set, like I already mentioned. So the wear test was the best for me. It received a five out of five on the scorecard. Which brings me to the final score for this Lily Lolo BB cream. 16 out of 20. Final verdict time, everybody. Would I buy this again? Um, you know, I wouldn't, but not for the reasons that I wouldn't in 2018. I love the price. I wish there were refills. I know they offer refills on certain products. I love all their certifications that they have. And for the price, like I mentioned, it's really good in this space. I have some other tinted moisturizer favorites that are significantly more expensive. It's nice to see this $22 price point. The reason, however, that I don't want to buy it again is not because I wouldn't recommend it to somebody looking for a clean BB cream. It's because I really prefer currently something that's richer, something that's a little bit, not heavy, but just a little bit richer upon application, less of a lightweight cream. I just, that's where I'm currently at. So, but also that shade range, that's a toughie. Does that mean it's not a great product? Absolutely not. But there you have it. That is the review for the Lily Lolo BB Cream, the 2021 update. That's what I thought. That's what the scorecard says. What do you think about this product? Would you buy it? Have you bought it? Is it your holy grail BB cream? Let us know in the comments below. And if you do want to leave a comment, make sure you share your skin type because I think that really helps other people who are looking at the product as well. Thank you so much for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button if you haven't already. Share it with a friend who's figuring out this clean beauty, green beauty thing. And I'm gonna go put this away and get started on my next review. I'll see y'all right back here real soon. I don't know why I'm doing this. Until then, bye.